Now, a political row is brewing over who is exactly responsible for the troubles of Deputy President William Ruto, who is facing charges at the International Criminal Court. Yesterday, opposition leader Raila Odinga sensationally claimed that President Uhuru Kenyatta was at the center of a plot that fixed his deputy at the ICC. Now, Uhuru's allies have since rejected the claims. Kills. Uhuru and his wing have the story clear. Ruto was our friend. Ruto remains our friend. We could not have sponsored Ruto to the high CC case or a court. Now that Kuria has come out clear, and we know who Kuria is and who Uhuru is, the ball stops with the president to make everything clear and not to use a very important matter for his own and his alliance's benefit for purposes of 2017 elections. Motes Kuria is known for three things. One, sneaking upon and punching and suspecting women. <laughs> Two, creating uh, or talking about issues that are ethnically divisive. Three, propaganda. So as God, we will treat everything that our party leader with the contempt it deserves. But having said that, that does not exempt the director of public prosecution. Charging him with procuring witnesses. Now, police imposter Joshua Karanja Waiganjo has been jailed for five years by an Ivasha court um, after he was found guilty of impersonating a police officer. It was a mixed day for Waiganjo after the court convicted him of five charges and acquitted of a similar number in one of the many cases he is facing countrywide. Senior Resident Magistrate Shadrach Mwinzi noted that Waiganjo, who still insists that he is a police officer, had failed to prove that. In his ruling, Mwinzi said that Waiganjo, who is serving time in prison, was guilty of impersonating a prison officer. The magistrate acquitted Waiganjo on two counts of robbery with violence after the complainants failed to testify in the court. He also acquitted him on two charges of impersonating a police officer and one count of dressing in police uniform. He jailed Waiganjo for five years for impersonating a police officer, one year for dressing in police uniform and six months for each three charges of being in possession of government stores. National tax task force on community policing has exuded confidence that the progress towards full implementation of the Yumbaku initiative is on the right track. Speaking during a status conference with heads of power statals at the Kenya School of Government, the chair of the task force, Joseph Kaguzi, has revealed that more than 213,000 community policing units called Usalama Singi clusters have been established across the country. Usalamu wa msingi clusters becomes Usalamu wa msingi, the foundation of security in the country. And we are reaching there. The reception, the aid is received, is being received very, very well. Just look at uh, the heads of chairs of Parasotos who are gathered here, and the CEOs of Parasotos, they now go and customize it. They get board papers on the areas of specialization, so they get the citizens involved as far as their parastoto organizations are concerned. Because they are, they are in charge of vital installations, they are specialized in a lot of uh, areas, and we start moving uh, correctly. Now let's go to Burkina Faso where coup leader Gil Badendier has now been charged in court. The court appearance coincided with a complete disarmament and disbandment of the presidential guard that staged the brief military takeover last month. The leader of last month's short-lived coup in Burkina Faso has been charged with crimes including threatening state security and murder. General Gilbert Diane Deere is expected to face trial before a military tribunal. 
Interim President Michael Kafando was reinstated two weeks ago after the intervention from the Army and West African leaders. The Presidential Guards unit that carried out the coup is to be disbanded, an act most residents are happy with. The disarmament of the Presidential Guard represents for me the advent of peace in Burkina Faso and the freedom of all Burkina Faso citizens. That is, we are proud of the disarmament of the RSP we present here. General Dayandia has also been formally charged with 11 crimes, including threatening state security, murder, collusion with foreign forces, voluntary assault, and witful destruction of property. Former Foreign Minister Jibril Basole, who was also arrested in connection with the coup, has also been charged. Mr. Basole has always denied any involvement. The coup of 16th September was the culmination of a plan that was carefully prepared by General Gilbert Dendere. The objective was none other than to end the transitional government and to install a reign of terror. Unhappy about being integrated into the regular army, members of the unit stormed the cabinet room on 16th September, seizing Mr. Kafando, the Prime Minister, and others. Those who have planned and executed this coup will account for their acts in court. A week later, when it became clear the presidential security regiment did not enjoy popular support, and after an ultimatum from the regular army, the RSP withdrew from the capital. Vinzi Kibiku, KTN News. Now, every year, prisons across the country break into song and dance, celebrating the academic excellence of inmates in KCP and KCSC exams. But what happens to these top performers after the jubilation? And how smooth are their academic journeys in prison? Murimi Mwangi visited two former top performers at the Kingongo GK prison in Nyeri and filed the following report. That Gregory Kiboi is an academic genius is not a secret. His keenness and activeness in class is enough evidence. We first met him in December 2013. At the time, he was the star of the year at Kimongo GK Prison in Nyeri. After scooping 340 marks, punctuated with a conspicuous grade A in English. Two years later, we are back here to monitor his academic progress and find him here in Form 2. So how is the going? Kiboi is a capital remandi facing murder charges and has been here at Kimongo for seven years, still waiting for the conclusion of his case. A lonely life which he says has reinforced his concentration to his studies and his star shines even more every day. But a myriad of challenges are abound for him here in prison. Well, unlike conventional learners in proper schools. Like Kiboi, fellow capital remandi Abraham Mufea is another academic genius here. He scooped 380 marks in his KCPE exams last year. We wanted to meet him once more, but we were informed by prison authorities here that he is very ill. Probably yet further evidence of how hard the academic life of inmates is across Kenyan prisons.
lakini amejitahidi kwa kazi yake nzuri with 340 marks gregory kiboy would probably have found his way to a very good school out there but despite being here at the Kingongo GK prison in Nyeri, Kiboi, who is in Form 2 at the moment, is still very hopeful that one day he's going to be a man of worth to the same society that he's presently accused of wronging at some point. Murumi Mwangi, KTN News, at the Kingongo GK prison in Nyeri. Now, several neighborhoods are on high alert here in Kenya following a warning that heavy rains associated with the El Nino phenomenon are due to hit the country this week. Now, already some parts of Kenya have begun experiencing the predicted rains. The government has warned people living in flood-prone areas to move out. Several places in Nairobi are also seen as vulnerable. The weatherman says the rains might be heavier than those experienced in the last El Nino season of 1997 and 1998. Now, the National Gender and Equality Commission is considering going to court to challenge the recent appointments to state corporations, citing that it did not adhere to the constitutional provisions on equality and inclusion. Now, the Vice Chairperson Simon Dubai has further noted that only two out of the 300 appointees are persons with disabilities, which means that the group represents only 0.6% of the appointments. The calculation I've given you of 0.6% is even less than 1%. So when will they meet the 5% threshold in the Constitution? So we are not seeing that it's a good way. Uh, we believe the state has an obligation to adhere to the constitutional provisions on equality and inclusion. The President has declared his support for the empowerment of youth women and the persons with the disabilities in key decision making organs and we urge his government to honor his promise by including a reasonable number of all the special interest groups i'm saying all the special interest groups because currently we believe for the women the number is is reasonable to Rwanda now, where the government is warning universities seeking to operate there to ensure they keep to the set standards. The warning comes days after the government lifted the suspension imposed on Mount Kenya University. Our reporter in Kigali, Eugene Nangwe, has more. Just a few days after the Rwandan government gave Mount Kenya University a clean bill of health to continue offering health science related courses at its Kigali campuses, officials at Rwanda's Higher Education Council now want anyone seeking to establish an institution of higher learning here to carry out due diligence before setting up shop. Innocent Mugisha, the executive director of the Higher Education Regulatory Body, says that much as the harmonization of the curriculum and education systems across the East African community is being put in place, it is still important for those planning to provide education services across their borders to be mindful about all the requirements needed to set up such institutions here in Rwanda. The benchmarks of the programs might be the same, or you need to compare if they are not yet in place because we've got benchmarks, common benchmarks for some of the programs but not all yet. It is a process. But it is very important, it is very important that you get in touch with the competent authorities on the ground. Here for instance we are talking with the regulatory bodies, with the institution, other institutions, with inter-university council to find out what are the additional requirements in that system where I want to go and operate. So that you see, you compare, you mirror them, you mirror the ones that you've been having back home to those that, are, that you're expected to comply with on the ground. For the last one month, courses on medical sciences at the Mount Kenya University Kigali campus had been suspended due to what the regulating body here terms as non-compliance with the Rwandan higher education requirements. So you find that as you roll out programs in the new terrain, in this case Rwanda, you need to make sure 
that the required infrastructure and facilities are in place. Now, this is what was required, that as the offering of the program moved from one level to another level, this had to be accompanied by the rolling out and expanding of the infrastructure. So that's where the discrepancy was. You see, this is where the discrepancy was. And in terms of the faculty members, you see? So we said, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Getting the clean bill of health has been a costly affair. According to officials at the Mount Kenya University campus in Kigali, an investment of over 15 million Kenya shillings has been pumped into upgrading the laboratories, one of the infrastructures in question. And now we have top of the range equipment that will allow students in nursing to continue students in Bachelor of Medical Laboratory Sciences and the pharmacy students. So the equipment that we have is actually now top of the range. In terms of space, we've been able to increase our laboratories from the original two when we started this process and now we have a total of five laboratories in the facilities. Our sport check at one of the campuses in Kigali revealed that learning had resumed. Some of the new students and those that were already enrolled in the health science faculties had also reported to class. I like the system of the Mount Kenya, so I had to put a lot of energy so that I can start from here. So after hearing that the, uh, that the, the school has been suspended, you know, I, I had just to wait for the, for the results from the government. So I'm really happy about the, how the government has just helped us to be studying now. I think the basic what we're feeling right now is just joy and happiness to know that we are actually able to go back in school and do what we're doing. Wow, that was uh, that was very very terrible story what I had, but thank God we we'll finally settled. But um, honestly, it was very shocking story, and uh, it really scattered me around. You understand? But uh, thank God now we settled back. With the suspension on health science related courses having been lifted, officials from the Mount Kenya University Kigali campus can now breathe a sigh of relief and put their effort in offering the much needed skills in this area. The question now is whether lessons have been drawn from this incident by other higher learning institutions seeking to set up shop right in Kigali. For KTN News in Rwanda, I'm Eugene Anangwe reporting. Time now for a short break, but don't go too far. I will be back with more news. Welcome back. Indeed, you're watching News Desk on KTN News. Baringo County Governor has called on local and foreign investors to take advantage of natural investments available in the county that will help boost the county's economy. Speaking during the launch of the Baringo Entrepreneurs Export Summit that is to take place um, early November, Governor Benjamin Chiboy said his county is ripe for investment due to the diversity of its resources that range from tourist attraction and geothermal energy to agricultural produce. The enthusiasm of our professionals, the warm and firm handshake of men in the savannah, men and women in a county of diversity, calling upon their children from the diaspora to be part of the development process in the county. To so any investor who is wishing to come to Barigo County, of course, it is not about producing energy. But it's about what the energy can do. In addition to producing electricity that can be put in the national grid, there is the byproduct of the production process. Giordano produces a lot of heat as you produce uh, energy. And that energy must not go to waste. It can power boilers, it can power uh, cold rooms and anything that you would like to do. Moving on to sports now, the road to Russia for the Harambe Stars begins today as they face Mauritius away in a World Cup preliminary round first leg match. 
The second leg will be played on Sunday 11th at the Nyaya Stadium and the winner will face Cape Verde in the second round. In other matches, South Sudan will play their first ever World Cup qualifier when they welcome Mauritania, while Tanzania will battle it out with Malawi and Comoros will take on Lesotho. Thank you very much for watching News Desk on KTN Home, but do join me on the other side on KTN News for the second part of this bulletin. My name is Najma Ismail.